Welcome to Liberty Explained, your guide to libertarianism. Your hosts are Chris Spangle, Julia Geyer, and Levy Rainey. And we break down a complicated ideology. It can seem like a big task to uh, people go, what is libertarianism? And you don't know where to start. Is that just hatred of all government? Well, we're going to explain exactly what that is, both here on the podcast and at libertyexplained.com. And please share this with your friends. If they have questions or you have questions, you can send those to ask at wearelibertarians.com. This podcast is produced by the We Are Libertarians Network, so please check out all of our shows. And uh, thank you to both of my co-hosts for being here. Julia, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. And uh, Levy, thank you for being here. Of course. And this is probably the most requested question Julia, I know since you, you've been sharing the show and being more vocal about your libertarianism, the wasted vote question is the most commonly asked thing that we get across to, on, on our Instagrams, on our Twitter, on everything. Oh, in person, on every social media, everything. It's just a constant. It's like the first question that people that don't know anything about libertarianism ask me when they find out that I am a libertarian and that I'm going to vote libertarian. Right. Exactly. So we wanted to give you an answer and you, you've heard, you know, choosing the lesser of two evils. That quote actually comes from uh, Pastor C.H. Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon, and it's of two evils, choose neither. And uh, Pastor Spurgeon, of course, we've uh, bastardized that into choose the lesser of two evils. But uh, it really it, it's a very informative quote because in a lot of ways, we are looking at two parties that promise us so many, so many utopian ideals, and they want to give us perfection and riches and paradise, and that to get there, we have to choose Joe Biden or Donald Trump <laughs> or John McCain and Barack Obama. And we're all un dissatisfied with those particular choices. And we have to compromise, you know, to, to get that utopian vision, to get exactly what we want. They're asking us essentially to compromise our morals and accept their largely flawed and basically at minimum, a highly imperfect candidate. Do you really think that Joe Biden or Donald Trump are the path to salvation, the path to perfection, the path to they promise everything. If you vote for me, I'll get rid of the liberals. If you vote, if you vote for me, I'll give you free health care. I'll give you free college. Yeah. How like it, are the, the results ever speak for themselves? So if you believe so much of your livelihood is dependent on who the president of the United States is, that inherently means that the office of the president has much too, too much power. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Unless you believe that this is your last ever election on earth, voting to give the duopoly candidate more power will only leave you with a worse choice four years down the line. It's like a vicious cycle at this point. And this is why both parties pitch the line that this election is too important. You know, we hear that every single election. They're like, you know, oh, this is the, the most important election of your lifetime. Um, you know, vote your conscience, express your true voice, reject both parties and stay home or, or demand a better choice. So, you know, suck it up, hold your breath, vote their candidate and, your life will be magically improved is pretty much the message that we're getting all the time. And now, um, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say that I, I completely reject that on every level. Yeah. Levy, have you ever thought that voting for Republicans or Democrats would actually make your life better? No, not at all. I think that's what's so discouraging is because I have um, a lot of woke friends. I'm doing air quotes, you know, like people very passionate um, about politics and like caring for certain groups of people or like standing up for them and being like an activist. Um, and they truly think like them voting for the Democratic Party is going to best serve these groups. And it breaks my heart. Like the amount of uh, conversations I've had with people where they're just like actually brought to tears and like experiencing like emotional pain over this. But it makes me so sad that they that they're like buying into the system that they have to choose between these two parties. And they look at me, someone also caring about these same issues. They see me as just like wasting my vote and I can't convince them otherwise. And it's so sad to yep. me. 
Yeah, I have friends who are like literally mad at me because I'm voting for Jorgensen. Yeah, yeah. My voter, and they're like, "If you love me, how could you not vote against Donald Trump?" And then others like, "How can you? How can you not vote for Donald Trump? Like, what is wrong with you? Why are you voting for Jordan?" Like, there's a very strong, powerful emotion attached to these two candidates. Yeah, and it was really weird. Like the other day, one of my friends was like, "I can't believe so and so is voting for Trump. Like, he's so racist." And I was like. Biden is very racist. If you do any research at all, especially for the policies that he's voted for, and they're like, oh, yeah, I know. And I was like, so why are you using that to rail against this person voting for Trump when you're doing the same thing just in a different way? You're yeah. both yeah. upholding a structure that's not, it's like prohibiting these groups from being cared for. It's so sad. What about ism is a complete disregard for the principle that you're trying to up and like, so. Candidate X does this, so I support candidate Y. Well, what about like the the, the both sides ism that goes on? It's all about diminishing. You're making excuses for a candidate's bad behavior when you call out the other team's bad behavior. If you no, really you, care about the bad behavior, you just call it out on yeah. your own. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating, Julia. It's very frustrating. It's like. Instead of holding your candidate accountable, you just point the finger back at the other one. And I, I, something that I see so often, especially recently, is like if you're if you support Trump, he does no wrong, and if you support mm -hmm. Trump, he does no wrong. Like it's like people can't even criticize a little bit of like someone's proven history. They're like, no, <laughs> oh no, not my candidate, but the other one. You know, yeah, people get, going on. yeah, people get very, very attached to it, it's kind of like they get attached to their binky, <laughs> you know, like a little kid, yeah. they're, they're passy. Oh. Like, if you take that kid's passy away, they tantrum. Like, and, and so it's there's very strong, very real emotions attached to an ideology that you've held on to for a long time, which is one of these two parties can save me, can achieve this utopia. Mm -hmm. And people who are listening to this program took the first step to move on because it's rejecting the fear that really what is what it comes down to. It's, don't be fearful because you already know that you're not getting what you want. You know that the outcome, the utilitarian view of this is that it's not working. And so you need something else. You're looking for an alternative. You're already there. You have walked. If you're like, you're jumping out of a plane, you're in the airplane, you've got your chute on, you're standing it. All you got to do is jump, you know? And, and that's really where I find a lot. When, when this is brought up, it's a lot of people who are either just so deeply entrenched in that cult thinking yeah. that one of you two really serve their interest, or they're looking for a way out to not jump you know, if enough people, there's there's something called the Free State Project. And and that's the important thing is that once you start to see the Libertarian Party in, and this is an excuse for the Libertarian Party being functional and, and getting involved in it. If you have a candidate that breaks through, like there is a candidate in Indiana running for governor that's polling really well. If he has an upset and he gets second in a three-way race at a statewide race or he wins... Well, all of a sudden, that completely changes the momentum. If if you have uh, a strong finish in the presidential race and you get five percent, then all of a sudden, all of these other all these the, uh, like dozens of states get ballot access. Money no longer has to be wasted on getting ballot access. You get federal matching funds, so all of a sudden, you have millions of dollars at your disposal that is given to the other two candidates. It's now given to the libertarians as well. Uh, and I know we'll, we'll talk about the complicated moral issues around that later. The, the free state project in New Hampshire has been trying to get people to move to that small libertarian leaning state to try and achieve this, to get two to five to 10 to 25 to 33% in, in that state. And it starts to show up in polling. Uh, the, the libertarian candidate running for governor that I mentioned, he, he finished 24, 24% in a three-way race. He's raised hundreds of thousands of dollars since that poll last month. Hundreds of wow. yard signs going out. It's totally changed the race. It's making the Republican governor panic because of one poll result. Because people are ready to defect. They just need to see that other person step up. 
Um, mm. So, you know, if your state is solidly red or blue anyways, why not step up and do that? Mm. Because it's the concept of the first follower, which you can find at Liberty Explained. The first follower is this great video of this one guy in a field dancing like a nut. And he looks really goofy dancing. And and everybody's sitting back going, this is uncomfortable. What a weirdo doing that thing over there that nobody else is doing. And then this one dude runs up, the first follower runs up and starts dancing with him. He normalizes the behavior yeah. and starts dancing too. And then a third one and a fourth one and a fifth one. And then all of a sudden, the entire crowd rushes in. And all it takes is for you, dear listener, to be the first follower, to normalize the person that's doing the right thing, that's taking, that's blazing the path. They just need you to step up and support them. And then all of a sudden, it's not why are you wasting your vote on a libertarian? It's why are you wasting your vote voting for the things that we know aren't working? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like a lot of people are like, I know several people who just wouldn't vote, you know, they're not going to choose between the two candidates. And so this is offering them another option. It's like, I don't think that's very wrong to say that, that that's like, you're losing a vote for your party when I don't even think they would have voted. Yeah, so it's probably and, just including more people. Exit polls, and I'm going to just skip ahead here and we'll come back, Julia, but mm -hmm. exit polls are considered the most reliable of all polling. And uh, I, I'm going to read this verbatim because I, I was precise in my language. It often shows that a candidate will pull small amounts evenly from the other two parties, but the vast majority of votes for Libertarian Party candidates are from independents first-time voters or reactivated voters that now see an option on their ballot that represents them. And so if you look at like the exit polls in Indiana for Lucy Brenton in 2018 or in Georgia for the governor's race there, you see that 2% of their vote is Republican, 2% of their vote is Democrat, and 98% are from people who finally see something on their ballot that they like. Wow. Hmm. Makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I just think um, change, change takes courage. And if you if you're if you're thinking about talking about supporting the Libertarian Party, just you 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 would be shocked at just by talking about it a little bit, just mentioning it. Mm -hmm. That such a conversation going. You, know? you had that experience, did you not? Like, it's totally changed in your world. How did that change when you finally just stopped being a, a mouse and started being a lion about it? Well, you know, uh, if you've listened to any of our previous episodes, which you should, um, <laughs> I always say, like, I, I came out of the closet as a libertarian recently because I was like a silent libertarian for a really long time. And I posted like a couple things during the lockdown, little things on my Instagram, like just little stories that I, just me talking. And I was like, I was like nervous about it, you know? And uh, I instantly got so much support and I was shocked by that. Cause I thought people would be like unfollowing me and like criticizing me and, you know, just giving me a hard time, but it was actually the opposite. So, um, I'm just telling you that because, it, it, you know, be a little brave and you'll be, I think, pleasantly surprised. And, um, I also want to say that a vote belongs to you and not another party. Um, so if these two parties do not represent you, then a libertarian vote will register as a visible, measurable protest against them. Uh, voting for libertarians says that there is a market for these ideas and it's important that you voice that, that, that you voice that support. So go. For yeah. It. Politicians are weasels. And when they see that there's a market for what we have to offer, they'll swoop in and they'll, they'll, they'll make it popular. They'll, they'll go oh, all of a sudden we're opening the ballot to third parties. There's, there's a real possibility here in our generation. You know, when you see those exit polling uh, numbers that I'm talking about, like with Lucy Brenton, under under uh, over 40 libertarian party candidates get one percent of the vote the majority of voters are elderly well not to be crude to our older listeners 
they'll not be in the voting population, <laughs> you know, for a long time. I think they're under their understanding of that. I'm not trying to be rude, but people under 40, the vote for libertarian candidates is 10%. And you go, Oh geez. Okay. Well, that still leaves 90%. You don't understand the power of every one of those percentage points. So a, a generation in the millennials and Gen Z who have been raised on the, on libertarian influences like Howard Stern and South Park and Penn Jillette and uh, and all the countercultural stuff that we've been raised and, and just the multicultural nature of our generations, it it's inevitable that libertarianism is going to be the predominant philosophy opposing, you know, socialism or or oh, nationalism. Really, I think that's where we're headed. And libertarianism is inevitable because it's the only th system that works. It's the only one that functions well. It's the only one where everybody gets what they want to a yeah. large degree. And so it really is inevitable. It's just time to stand up and start actually declaring it, saying it. I'm, I'm a libertarian, and yeah. here's what it's about. And that's what Liberty Explained is about, is giving people those tools, Julia, to do that. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I, I'm telling you, I mean, the amount of support that I've gotten is, I was shocked. It, it was like, awesome. It was honestly exciting and thrilling and really a positive thing that happened to me coming out of the lockdown. So um, yeah, I mean, like, go for it. What, what do you have to lose? You know, it's exactly right. What do you have to lose? I live, <laughs> I live in Indiana. Trump's gonna win this state. Julia is in New Jersey. Biden's going to win that state. Register your protest vote. Levy, right. you're, in, you're in Georgia. You're in a swing state. And that calculation may be different for most people. But, you know, it's an even more powerful statement saying, I'm not buying into this. I'm voting for third party. And I hope you both lose. Oh, I cost your candidate the election. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, have, are you going to vote? Have you thought about who you're voting? You don't have to, to say one way or the other. But. You know, do you vote for third party most of the time? Who? Levy. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, like I've only ever voted libertarian. Nice. I mean, I'm only 23, so it's not like I've been a part of a lot of <laughs> elections to things, but I started off really strong. <laughs> so I when haven't you made a mistake yet. <laughs> so when you're talking to your friends about this stuff or or saying you, you share libertarian memes and stuff, like what kind of response? Mm -hmm do you get i mean and how do you handle the wasted vote uh it's it's hard to even engage in in that conversation because if you genuinely cannot if you don't have the capacity to understand that that's not a wasted vote and you can't actually engage in that conversation then i don't even really know if i want to have it with you and maybe that's like on me like i should be willing to have that conversation more but if you're not even open to the concept that it's not a wasted vote i'm like i'm gonna go for the people that are more kind of like oh tell me more i'm not gonna go for the people that are just like you suck and you're costing so many people all of these rights and you know so right. I usually just sort of like peace out. I was going to say, I know you're a libertarian because you just said you're too stu stupid for me to explain this to you. I almost, I mean, that's what it's like. A fedora as you said that, but oh my God. No, you're exactly right. You, 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 if you're a baby libertarian, pick your battles. Don't throw your pearls before swine. Don't waste your time on people where you yeah. can't change their mind, but say what you want to say. Don't spend a bunch of time arguing, but the people who I will say that the, the hard headed person you're talking to in the comments, they they're you're not going to change that person's mind if they're a, a Republican or Democrat. But there's a hundred people watching how you handle that and how you comment back, and that's those mm -hmm. are the people are going to learn. Those are the people that will DM you and go, "Hey, you made a great point. You have more info on that." Yeah, that's so true. It's so true. The comment section is pretty powerful. And if you have questions, if you need immediate help, uh, join the Facebook group for We Are Libertarians. It's called WAL Nuts, Walnuts. And uh, you can <laughs> join the group. And everybody there is always happy to talk to new libertarians or people who, who just don't have the answer to a question. Um, and, and so we, we crowdsource some of that. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Julia Levy. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all. And I hope that all of you waste your vote on things you actually believe in. And we will see you again next time.